We're gonna review a PC case today. Intro song. Alrighty, so bad intros aside, today we will be going over the full acrylic Geek Max M100 Mini ITX PC case. Um, this is by the company um, Geek with three E's, just in case you didn't know. And uh, links and everything will be down in the description, and uh, I'll probably mention it again at the end of the video. So coming in at 49 US dollars, this is a full acrylic gaming PC case supporting only mini ITX motherboards. And right away we can tell this case is not your standard small form factor case with its clear side panels, sleek all white acrylic face, and reverse mounted motherboard. This case is clearly all for show. Now that being said, it still manages to keep a lot of core features that strike a difference between a PC case and a gaming PC case. Obviously being a small form factor case, one of its most important aspects is, well, how small is it? Sizing in at around 196 by 320 by 272 millimeters or 7.7 .7 inches by 12.6 inches by 10.7 inches, while it's not the smallest case out there, it definitely still makes it into the small form factor category. Coming out of the box, you will notice this case does not come as most standard PC cases would. In fact, this is the first case that I've ever owned that I actually needed to fully assemble before using. The packaging seems well enough, nothing fancy or over the top, and I did notice a scratch on one of the clear panels caused by one of the acrylic brackets scraping against it. All panels are lined with a thin layer of factory plastic sheeting, though under enough pressure these sheets will do nothing to stop scratches. Hopefully this is something they will address in the future. Lucky for me, the panel that was scratched was the rear panel behind the motherboard, which for me ended up being the bottom of the case, so the scratch was not noticeable at all. Assembly is fairly simple and straightforward, though some common sense and good comprehension skills will go a long way, seeing that there's a lack of written English instructions. But there are pictures and they do do the job and all included hardware is nicely labeled. As for the screws and hardware, all that is needed is included in the plastic container, each screw getting its own section to ease the assembly process. And looking at the front of the case, we see we have one USB 2 and one USB 3, a headphone and mic input, power and reset button, which have a very satisfying click to them, might I add, as well as a clear acrylic slits for the power and hard drive activity LEDs. At the top of the case, we can see support for one 120 millimeter fan, which if the space is occupied by a GPU, then the GPU has unlimited access to fresh air. And on the back, we can see the cutout for the motherboard IO, another 120 millimeter fan, the power supply mount, and all pretty standard stuff. If we take a look at the PCI slot mount, we can see that we have a very unconventional way of securing the card. Though a little tricky to set up at first, it holds a lot better than I would have guessed and it's not really anything I would worry about. As we take a look inside the case, we can see a hard drive bracket which can mount two 3.5 inch hard drives vertically, at least that's um, how I was able to see them mounted which can be accessed through the cutouts on the back panel, so removal of the motherboard is not necessary to get to those hard drives. We can also see some unusually tall motherboard standoffs, which allow for wires to be ran underneath the motherboard, and in this case is a very good thing due to the lack of cable management options, which is nothing new in the world of small form factor cases. As for hardware support, we already know that an ITX motherboard is all that's supported, for that and for the GPU we are restricted to about 10 inches I wouldn't suggest going over in length and as far as the width and the depth um, I don't see any 10 inch card um, running into a lack of space as far as those two measurements are concerned as for power supplies almost all ATX ones will fit without an issue though it's really not something that you should worry about seeing that the most you can fit in this case is one GPU and one CPU and uh, chances are with only with that small amount of hardware you're not going to be trying to fit a 1600 watt power supply in there but if you were looking for an exact size about seven inches would fit just fine eight inches you'd start to push the boundaries of how big of a power supply you can actually fit in there last for the cpu cooler this case surprisingly supports the hyper 212 evo from cooler master and due to having a rear 120 millimeter fan mount any 120mm radiator can easily make its way in there. As for airflow of the case, it seems to breathe very well in all the tests that I've done. 
All the components remained comfortably within operating temps even when overclocked which as we know is a troublesome area for a lot of small form factor cases. This case does come with soft padded feet which can be mounted traditionally on the bottom or in my case on the back of the motherboard panel for a side standing case. The feet are not rubber but more of a foam padding which do not offer as much slip resistance as rubber though it does seem to have more vibration dampening, which is a plus in my book. So on to the conclusion, this case is definitely a looker and easily won me over with the aesthetic design, the support for decent hardware and cooling options while maintaining a sleek, one-of-a-kind layout. So the looks and feel of this all acrylic mini tower combined with the $49 price tag really made me a strong believer in the potential of this case, seeing that most acrylic cases run for several hundred dollars um, to even way more than that. Though I was kind of upset that the case came with a scratch on one of the clear panels, though it may have been the bottom panel and will go unnoticed, I feel that is something that could have been easily prevented and hopefully will be addressed in the future. Also the lack of any multilingual instructions was also a letdown. Um, it's bad enough that the manual was a few printed sheets of paper stapled together. The least they could have done was made it legible to more than people who can read that specific language. Luckily for me there was pictures and if I could do it so could you. Um, the pictures are fairly easy to follow and uh, as the case is pretty much straightforward on how to assemble. In my opinion, building the case is not considered a bad thing because I did enjoy it and it allows me to get really familiar with the case for maybe some future modding or overall expandability in the future, though it isn't something I can call a pro nor a con since my decision doesn't necessarily speak for everyone. Overall, this case sacrifices a lot to look so damn good, but hey, since when is being beautiful easy? So there we have it, the Geek Max M100. Links to where you can buy this beauty will be in the description. If there's any further questions or things you guys think I might have missed or want to ask, go ahead and put it in the comments and show me some love and hit the like button. Anyways, this is Steven with All Talk On and I will catch you guys later.